by 20 lathe. Mine happens to be Enco, but Harbor Freight, Grizzly, lots of people make them. And, you know, there's uh, user groups devoted to that style lathe and pretty popular. But anyway, I needed to, this part here is what I was trying to make. It's really small and um, I need a bunch of them. It has a quarter, about a quarter inch, I was making them a quarter inch shank there. It's got a head on it. One end is clearance drilled. The other's tapped. You know, I made this first one. It's very accurate, but it took me a really long time to make it. Now the 9 by 20 Chinese laser don't really have a, a carriage stop on them. And I looked at building one and I've seen all kinds of people's made them micrometer type carriage stops. But, but I thought, well, you know, that might be fine, but then you'll constantly be changing the micrometer too because I have an overall length I need to be consistent. I have a shoulder length I need here to be consistent. When I put my part in, I'd like to be able to face the part, you know, to start off with on this end. So with no carriage stop, I kept, here's what I come up with. I kept trying to figure out a way to do it. I also have a quick change tool post, which most, a lot of guys have already upgraded to. So the, the, I decided that this is going to basically be three operations. So I've got my three tools I think I need for this operation. I've got a parting tool, a cutoff tool. This is a, uh, oh, just a, a normal turning tool. This is kind of a universal turning tool I ground just for facing. So this is what I made. These are carriage stops that correspond to each tool. That This one will stop the carriage for my facing. I have a shoulder cut for this one and a cutoff tool for this one. And it lets me reproduce this little part really fast and accurate enough for me. This isn't going to be a precision thing. This, they all need to be really similar. But I need to make about 50 of these. All, all these are are adjustable pieces of quarter 20 all thread, which you can buy the uh, two foot pieces of all thread at Lowe's or Home Depot, or you probably already have some in your shop. And um, these coupling nuts, quarter 20 coupling nuts, they come two to a pack. They're about two bucks at, at Lowe's, so they end up being about a dollar a piece. And uh, the reason I use these was it gives me some adjustability. I cut my all thread just, you know, a tad shorter where I, the actual measurement, that lets me run this coupling nut in and out to dial it in. Once I get it right where I want it, I just have a quarter 20 nut as kind of a lock nut. And I just finger tightening. They don't, there's no pressure on them. They don't change. You don't have to torque them down. And it's really easy to adjust, you know, in place on the lathe. And uh, let me show you how I'm using them on the lathe. Now here at the lathe, you'll see the um, where the saddle goes. I noticed that this little sweeper here is rubber. It's not a very good point to locate off of. It's it's too flexible. But right behind it, there's a nice square piece of the saddle. Rides on these flats. I've just laid a couple of uh, ceramic magnets. They're not very strong, which makes it really easy to just take one of your uh, carriage stops. It's hitting up against the casting here. When you bring your saddle over, it's a positive stop right there. It's like if you're doing a facing operation, I'll pull it up there and I'll lock my carriage stop, do my facing. Then the next part of my process would be the shoulder cut. I'll do a quick, quick change tool. Bring this over my next length, my shoulder cut, and so on. And uh, once you get the first set dialed in, then you can make your parts really fast. And uh, so maybe the best way to show it is to show it in action. I'll make one of these parts with this tool, with this tool set. Let me see what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna make my part, but you know, I, I already did this once and um, I got a new, a new respect for guys that film lathe operations because the camera, needs to be right where you need to be so if it feels a little clunky it's because I'm working this 
from the side of the machine and uh it's a uh, anyway hats off to you lathe filming guys uh, it's not that easy anyway here, here's how i make a part my materials loosely in the chuck i'll take my facing tool and let's see well and to get my facing carriage stop in place let me run this over and I'll just use the tool to push the material in because all we're doing is cleaning it up from the last cut off Switch over to my turning tool to cut the shoulder. Change my carriage stop for the one I made for the shoulder. Kind of keep an eye on how the shaving don't land down in that gap. It happens there every once in a while. Most of the time it stays clean, but I've noticed it a couple of times. This will be the only dimension that I really have to measure. I'm going for a quarter of an inch on this. It's not going to be super precision. It's more just so they're all the same. Got about 10,000 left. operation is gonna do the parting tool, cutoff tool. Change my carriage stop to the cutoff tool. Lock the carriage. There's the finished part. They um, they're all coming out the same. They all have a little nib on there, but which doesn't matter because there's going to be a drilling operation after this. But anyway, it works pretty good. You can make a lot of small parts and make them all relatively the same. Now you can probably take this idea a little farther by um, coming up with some predetermined lengths and um you know these these will connect together to make longer ones so you i could see you having uh several sizes maybe some 
some uh, predetermined lengths of all thread. These uh, coupling nuts give you about an inch of adjustment, so you may be able to come up with a nice little system, make it uh, more, even more useful. Good luck with it, hope it helps. Thank you.